Good evening and welcome to the City Council Committee of a Whole meeting for Tuesday, May 18th. Um, first and foremost, I would like to tell everybody that we did lift the wa mask wearing in City Hall. Unless you want to wear it, you go ahead. Otherwise, you do not have to. I don't even need to read this first thing on here anymore, do I, Miss Wood? No, you do not. I didn't think so. What's that? The whole seating thing. Oh, it's all lifted. Yeah. yeah. Mayor, we removed it from the town club agenda, but this had already been out, so. No problem. We'll be on the other ones. Cool beans. Let's call this meeting to order. If we could all rise for Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doing roll call, everybody is present, minus Councilman Collison, who did call in ahead of time and forewarn us um, that he would not be here this evening. Uh, we do have a item to add to our committee of a whole meeting this evening, which is I'm fumbling here. Uh, Mayor, it will be to add item number 10, liquor store signage discussion, please. I thought that was number eight. Uh, that's a plaque. Oh. Plaque is number eight. All right. All right. With that being said, let's move on to committee meeting items. E1, City Council agenda request by William and Sharon Snelling. If you would step forward to the podium, you two. They've, they've asked to. Oh, unless they've changed their mind, they've asked to not speak. Did you guys? Do you want to speak? You don't have to. No. Have a seat then, folks. What do we got here? So the, I think you've, well, council or uh, committee, you've only got the, the letter that they drafted. Um, I had chatted with them uh, a couple weeks back. And uh, without going into the details, um, long and short is, is COVID was pretty tough on them and left them in a spot where they did not have anybody that could keep track and monitor their house. Um, that was simply not medically possible. And uh, when they were finally able to get back to their house, they realized the toilet had been going and Oofed up. racked up a pretty good sized bill. And so they're looking for some, some kind of forgiveness on that. Um, they, they made three, rec you know, three asks, you know, sort of three options to, that they would hope the council would consider. Is one is they would just pay their normal water sewer bill and the rest could be forgiven, um, or they would pay you know, $100 the rest be forgiven, or $200 for the rest be forgiven. Financially, it's been tough for them, uh, given some medical bills that have come about as a result as well. Um, so they're looking for uh, for a little bit of help. Any discussion on this item, item, gentlemen? I personally, I would probably just uh, this whole COVID thing's been hard for a lot of people. Personally, I think uh, it's an unforeseen situation. I don't think anybody could have controlled it. Personally, I think they should just maybe pay their regular sewer and water rate that they would be normally paying for that month and forgo the rest. But I mean, it, you know, if somebody has the same issue, I, by all means come forward, but it doesn't mean we're going to do it for everybody, my opinion. Yeah, I think I read the letter. I think that makes sense. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to totally agree with you guys. I, I think uh, it should be a case-by-case -case basis by all means. Mm -hmm. but you have a right to come in, in front of the, the council and or committee. But uh, I'm in agreement with you guys. Just pay your normal sewer bill. And, and forgo the, the overage. Yeah, I'll, I'll work with... Did the, you get the toilet fixed? Yeah. That's uh, good. <laughs> Running? Oh. Yeah, and that's tough for you, and I totally understand that. I mean, it's not been a good thing, so that's my recommendation. Yeah. So I don't think there's any disagreements with that. Yep, I'll take care of a billing adjustment to move it down to a, a monthly average kind of thing. Yep. It doesn't have to go to the council. Yeah, I'll have to have it to get in touch with you. Yep. Thank you very much. 
You're very welcome, you guys. God bless you, and I hope everything turns out to the positive. That's quite all right. Thank Thanks for coming. Let's move on to E2 police updates. Chief Myers. He didn't even have to move to a table. That's amazing. All right, Mayor and Council. Um, just got a few things as far as updates as what we're doing. Obviously, we're doing important things every day, but uh, some of the other things. We are uh, have a contingent offer out for employment for that last grant position officer that went out this morning. So hopefully we'll see that on the next uh, agenda, which will bring us up to the highest level of staffing that the police department's had in since there was a police department. So I'll bring us up to that highest level with that grant position. Um, if any of you on council have drive around town, you've seen as of last Thursday, we've put up the speed sign that you requested. It's on South Passage right now. That was just, I got it in at the end of last week and that was the easiest place to try it out there. Uh, I'll be working with Matt from Public Works, trying to get some other signs and brackets put up different places, but I just wanted to get it out and see how it worked and go forward with that. So we'll have that out there. Um, Are you, collect sure. you collecting data from it, Chief? It will be. I haven't you haven't yet. yet? Haven't yet. So this is kind of, I just gonna put it out there for a little bit, get the data so I can get <coughs> figure it out. And then I'll figure out how, you know, what we're going to do with that data. But yeah, everything we put out should have data for where it is well, from different places. I could tell you how many times I went by and seen it and was over the limit. <laughs> were you one of those that like try to see how fast you can get no. it to go? Oh, no. That's good. No, I, I, it caught me off completely off guard. And like I said, I, I know, I know those things work because there's a couple of the roads, I, uh, other cities that I drive in that have those things. And you see people's brake lights, wham! I mean, it's, it, it catches works. their attention. It yeah. works. Yeah. Are you happy with it so far? I mean, I know you haven't well, collected any data yet, but. Yeah, I mean, so far, just the ease of installation type of thing. I mean, and ease of setup should be good. I'll let you know okay. right, if I take it down this week sometime and grab that data. In theory, I can grab the data without taking it down, too, so that's actually convenient with that. You have to let us know how your, your data turns out. I'm curious. Yeah, so we'll see. There's always that challenge you're wondering if people are going to try to get the high score or not. So, right. <laughs> you know, I, I do have it turn off at 40, so it's not going to read anything over 40. That's good. Just so you don't have that piece of the puzzle. That I haven't done. <laughs> but, it, I mean, when you get you get to 30, it still blanks, and yep. you have to get below, like, 28, and then it'll stop blinking. But I, 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 I wholeheartedly think those things are a great investment, and it it keeps you guys from having to be everywhere and, and our goal behind that will be try to keep it mobile i mean because again it, it'll wear out in one spot so we'll go to our, our, our areas that we have the complaints in and so we'll get double duty for it one of the duty is actual driver behavior and the second duty is to get the data that we all kind of speculated and thought maybe try to get what it is so we'll get both those pieces of the puzzle out the sneaky thing would be to send a police car out there too. So um, that thing starts flashing, them, they'd be like, "Oh shucks!" It's like get on the other side of the railroad, <laughs> have a squad car on the other side of the railroad tracks. As soon as they hit that thing, they slow down, then they speed up when they get. Right. Well, we have more staff <clears throat> now, so we can do things like that. Um, other thing is, we did order that uh, capital squad in January. Uh, a Dodge Charger, and looks like at the end of this month, the end of May, is when it's actually going to ship from Chrysler. <coughs> so, anyway, that's what the hold up there, just trying to get that shipping from the manufacturer. Five months just to get the car, and then you're going to build it yet? Well, that's shipping, so that means it goes on rail car, and who knows how long we get it, month to at least And gets tagged down the way someplace, somebody Holy will tag it. Hannah. Yeah. So, this one's taking a bit longer, but that's the process with that and then it'll be probably a month after we get it before it's ready to go we have all the equipment but it needs to be set up over june the, beginning of july june july would be realistic hopefully probably more july than june and then the only other thing i just bring it up again uh, like this week we have two officers that have been out all last week and this week for the defensive tactics instructor course we have other two others going to firearms instructor course and we have two that did taser course so by the end of 
this calendar year, we're going to have our own in-house instructor pool um, that's two deep. So we're not relying just on one, one person or relying on another entity. We'll go do it all in-house and train in-house. Darn good idea. Yeah. Not saying we won't train with other entities, but we're not going to have to rely on that. What if other entities come to you? Will you train them? No. Not necessarily. All right. Just uh, there's, I don't think there's an economic benefit to the city in that behalf. So. Right. Yeah. Um, and then on the next council agenda, there'll be a, a, a resolution on there. I, I didn't put it on there, but I'll give you the updates just on the Joint Powers SRT team updates. Um, anywhere, you know, uh, Lieutenant McCarty is, is commander, was appointed commander, so that's going to be on there. Um, I took the role of the board chair for that Joint Powers, so that'll be on there too. And then we took over the fiscal holder of that piece of the puzzle because we had the commander. So there's just some changes with that board. So that'll come to council next. There you go, two first. Is there such thing as radar school or like laser radar school? Yes. Are you sending any cops to that? They've been there, yeah. Some have. There's a difference, right, between radar and, yep. and, and laser. Laser is a is the gun light, laser, right? Light, it's light, you know, an optical light, and radar is radar waves. <coughs> so yeah, two different tools. But we've sent guys to the laser one, or yep. the light one. Yep, the light one. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah. More the merrier, if you ask me. Awesome. Thanks for the good job, Chief. Uh, E three liquor store updates. profit for the month of January through April, we are at 26.96%. Uh, total sales January through April was $1,155,968. Um, sales in the same period last year were $1,112,210. And 2019, we are at $867,512. Uh, looking back, uh, COVID sales and COVID, you know, happened last year, sales in 2020, uh, we're up 28% over 2019, while the customer count increased by only 9.5%. So, so far this year, we've managed to stay ahead of the 2020 sales pace. Um, despite, you know, COVID hit in March of last year, um, so we're, we're just kind of gotten into that, uh, being in, in May now, but we're showing a 40 percent increase in sales over March of 2019. Um, it'll be an interesting time to see um, you know, what our sales figures will do throughout the year, but so far we're staying. We're a little under where we were last year, but compared to like previous years, we're still increasing you know, at a pretty substantial pace. Um, I also contacted Luella Poldeen um, to kind of set up a time to uh, get together with her and see what she's interested in doing to uh, name part of the new store for Bozo. I understand that was the council's request. Um, so you know, we're, I'm gonna you know, meet with her and kind of get a history of Octane Liquor as well and see what she wants to do, but I think it would also be kind of neat to incorporate some of that history into the new liquor store as well with the council permission. It's a blessing on that. Um, we also have a new store of task and timeline. Mike developed that, been working closely with him, kind of make sure we're ahead of the game on everything going on with the new store. Uh, we've been taking requests for new product from customers for a few months now, and um, working with vendors to identify like new products that you know we're going to be carrying at the new store that we don't have room for right now. So. Questions? From you, you've you've had them I mean you've you've asked what they'd like and then told them it would be in the new store you've yes. made that clear okay yes. um, so for example you know, like we carry a lot of proprietary stuff like total wine products um, working with vendors there most of the stuff we've brought in so far has been because customers have requested it um, while I've reached out to the vendor and you know asked them can you give us a list of the top 50 that you sell that way we can bring in those top 50 you know and, and we'll have a good idea and by asking all the customers what they want to see, you know, we're not going to be just going off of what the vendors want us to carry because we know that they're all going to want to sell us everything that they possibly
Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're not going to warehouse anything for them. We're going to, you know, bring in what we're going to sell. What the community wants. Exactly. Yep. Any questions, gentlemen? I don't. Thanks. Good okay. job, Keith. Uh, E4, turkeys and ducks discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this item was asked to be on the call agenda, I think, by you, yep. Mr. Mayor. And so we did some research, and right now uh, our, in our prohibited animals section, we do not allow chicks or poultry, and ducks and turkey are considered poultry by definition. Um, so we looked at the surrounding areas, and most of them, if they do allow it, it's in agriculture. We don't have agriculture land um, zoning, but we do have the R1A, that's a one acre or more um, zoning. Uh, so if you wanted to look at possibly putting them in there, um, otherwise you would need to have a discussion if you want to allow them on city lots, what, you, what your rules to be right now. My, um, my department's recommendation would be just to leave our ordinance the only reason I brought this up is I had a few residents that came to me and said they have allergies to chicken eggs, which I wouldn't have believed it if I'd have been the normal Joe, but my cousin is one of those that also has one. Uh, he's got allergies to duck eggs, I mean chicken eggs, and uh, but he can eat duck eggs. And that's, that's what he does. I mean, he's even got ducks on his property. So when these two came to me, I said, well, it's not the first I've heard of it, believe it or not. The turkey, I, I'm not too fond of turkeys, but that's just my opinion. But ducks, that was the only reason I, I wanted to bring it to the table and see what your guys' thoughts were. Is there's a few residents saying that they have chicken allergies and they'd like to raise ducks. And Well, turkeys is getting to be like... They're like everywhere. Council, well, like Councilman Lundin says, we might want you to move out in the country. But ducks, I, I can picture ducks. I think I'd be with you on turkeys. I don't think I'd do turkeys. Yeah, I'm not too fond of the turkeys. They're evil little birds. But that's my opinion. <laughs> Look at what the surrounding cities have done. Cambridge are considered farm animals, and they're not allowed to be kept in agricultural district of the city or on a residential lot of at least 10 acres in size are only allowed either one of those you're saying are that way in cambridge yeah princeton turkeys and ducks are considered farm animals are not allowed to be kept in an agricultural district of the city similar to cambridge our own, our only same thing. Allowed, it says. just to be clear i just want to be clear it says are only allowed it, is that the way you read it I don't know. So what do you propose, Mayor? What's your, what's your thought on this? I just wanted to bring it to the table and see what you guys thought. I mean, it's, it's one of those things if, I, I don't know if we said, yeah, we, we don't want the turkeys, but the ducks are okay, and then we started setting rules, regulations, and... Precedents. And there is that precedence. And, well, I looked at this list. I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't want swine, goat or sheep, turkeys, bull, what's a bovine, a cow? Yeah. Equine, equine, a horse, not a horse. We already allowed chicken. I'm with um, you. I don't even know what half of these are. Well, an emu, an emu I know who because I have somebody that has or had two emus. So. Or an ostrich, or the same thing. They're out in a township. So North Branch, I mean, that's, uh, if I'm looking at this correctly, it's, so they allow all these things depending on the size of the lot size, right? So there you could have one goose or turkey for each, you know, or chicken. Two, two tenths of a, well, right, but the, yeah, well, the chicken is underneath there, I'm sorry. And, yeah, duck and chickens are, so if you had a one acre lot, you could have 10 ducks or chickens, according to what this says for North Branch? Yes, that's correct. So North Branch does allow it, so I mean, I think, we could do something similar to that, you know. I mean, Steve. <laughs> well, you, then now you're now I you're saw opening. That dirty look, Steve. No, no, it wasn't a dirty <laughs> look. What I'm saying is, if you look at the rest of it, they're also looking at dairy cow and they're looking at. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, not, so you're so now you're now you're opening up a big page that's going to start bringing everything and anything in here, and that's that's what I brought up at the last meeting. Yeah, I, know. I said you're going to open up a can of worms, and where are you going to stop? 
I, that's where I would say let's draw that line now, where we're saying no swines, no goats, no sheeps, no turkeys, if that's the way we went. What did you say a bovine was? Cow. Cow. Yeah, definitely no bovines. I would, I would say I would, I'm, I'm, I'm open to ducks. I think ducks are, are not like geese where they're a dirty animal, at least from my experience. I mean, I even went to the extent to where I had two Canadian geese when I was a kid in the city. I don't even think we were supposed to have them, but we did. And I grew them things up full-blown until they flew away and never came back. Councilman Gordon, have you had any experience with turkeys? You kind of are <laughs> on favor for both. So. No, I have no experience with uh, any of these things, actually, to tell you the turkeys truth. Turkeys so. can be very but mean. I, I do know that in turkeys North Branch... Turkeys very mean. I, don't, uh, I haven't heard any complaints come from North Branch that they were, like, having major problems with the livestock over at people's houses there you know what I mean? the only thing that i've heard from them is turkeys are everywhere in north branch yeah but that's all i've heard but i know first in fact that turkeys can be very mean are you talking about wild turkeys yeah well, well any turkey any turkey that's just okay. their that's just their sense as they i mean them thing them claws they have their talons literally like an eagle or a hawk i mean they're bad news if you ask me if you if you want my honest opinion, I would stop. Yeah, I would say okay, a duck, but that's it, no more. We got to stop. We can't keep <clears throat> because the next ones are going to come in and say, well, you know, you allowed ducks and you allowed a turkey, and I, you know, I really I got these fainting goats, and you know, come on, you, you do have to draw a line. You're in the city. I agree. I could see the fainting goat one coming next, so I would stop it while. You're I'd no, stop the bleeding, one, so know, to speak. I don't speak. know what a painting goat is. It's them goats, you can run them, scare them, and they literally really? fall, over. <laughs> fall over. They stiff and fall over. Well, I mean, I think they're hilarious, but... We have one of those, at least one. <laughs> no, we don't. No, no we don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what I'm just saying, is, is if you want to start having livestock, then you're going to have to move out into the country. I, I concur. I'm, so I, I'm many, not disagreeing, nor am I agreeing, I have guess. Have you come up with a, a number of ducks you'd want, or...? I don't think we should have any more than two. To Don't be honest, to. well, has anyone studied ducks? I mean, chickens. I know you. If you can't, have no, I, just, you can't have just one chicken. That's why we allowed five because right. chickens will die. If you right, and and that's that's what I'm saying is, is if we're okay with going ducks, then I am more than happy. I don't want to put anything on the staff's plate unless they're going to step up and say they can do it. But I'll do homework on ducks. Yeah, unless I, they're going to cook the duck for us, right? Or unless Miss Wood, you want to look. I mean, you're busier than a one-legged man and a butt kicking contest so <laughs> I don't want to put any more on your plate than necessary I, I kind of would still do my due diligence even at the same time if you said you're going to take it on I, I'd still do it too just and you know me and you we always talk about things so we can always throw our cards at the table at the same time and see what we came up with I guess Sure. Ms. Selman or Ms. Wood, if you wouldn't, either one of you wouldn't mind doing that. Awesome, thank you. E5, VFW Park Lease Termination Discussion. Mayor Johnson and Council, um, as you guys know, um, there have been ongoing conversations about potentially reducing the number of parks that the city maintains. Um, so the VFW Park is one of those properties that gets pretty minimal use. Um, but still requires resources to maintain. So I looked into the resolution from 1987, which is back when we started the leasing of that property with the VFW, um, and it looks like it is fairly easy um, for us to kind of have approach that conversation. We're not constricted to a long-term agreement with them. Um, so I wanted to look to council and see um, your recommendation or your direction on this item and see if whether or not we should continue to lease that property and maintain that park, or if it is a potential opportunity to um, terminate that lease. I think everybody up here knows my feelings. I think we should terminate that lease, get out of that park. I, I, I Personally, I think what we should do is tell them, here's your park. It's pretty much, it's fairly new. We've redone everything in it, and good luck. And yeah. I think we should walk away from it. I, I agree with that. Sounds good to me. I bet you there's uh, somebody sitting over here at Public Works probably say, yay! I mean, I... I, I get, I've had a lot of people from outside the city say, 
man, you guys at the city by Sandy got going on. You got all these parks and everything else. And I understand where they come from on that, but it's it, it, for public works, that's a nightmare. I mean, you're all over the place. If you, you could probably designate one guy all week long just to go and clean up parks, and that's all he could do. And he'd have to buy an arm more to do it and more equipment. I'd rather put everything in that Bluebird Park. That's our showcase. Let's, let's stand that thing up so everybody can be proud of it. It's not like Public Works has a lot to do anyway. No. <laughs> if I may, Mayor Council, so if we are looking to terminate that lease with the VFW, then it would be to remove that playground equipment with ours that we installed. Is the recommendation from the committee to donate what's there to them or to remove it and return it to grass or inquire with what they would like to do? I, I would donate it to them and but re, you know, and ask them what they would like to do. Yeah, I, okay. I would donate it to them back yeah. to if the they wanted, If they would be willing to accept it. Yep. Yeah. If they're willing to maintain that park, they can have everything on it. If they're hesitant, I would. Good luck. I would. I would try to encourage them to take it because we. Really, I don't think we need to deal with that. So, I would say, we want you to take it. You know. We'd love you to take it. Yeah. Please, as our please as our gift, it's yours. Alyssa will work on that and bring it back for council approval, depending on what's determined. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Olson. Let's move on to E6, the wind turbine discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we're bringing this back to Cal uh, at your request. And we also have uh, Brandon Keaton here in the audience that, who asked for this agenda request. We did uh, send out, a, Ms. Wood sent out a video, the YouTube video of what it sounded like. And uh, it's roughly the size of a boot, because you wanted to know the size, so you put it in a picture in your packet. And then it's about 40 decibels when the word wind turbine is at top speed, and that's similar to a, a running refrigerator for sound. So. It looks like a little small toy airplane. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. So if you have questions. What's the decibel on that? 40. Can we get this gentleman to come up and speak on it, maybe? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind coming up, Brandon. <laughs> He's got a packet. Oh, look at that well prepared man. Yeah. Oh, Jeff, you're familiar with your hair dryer. No. Like, <laughs> what? You're familiar you. with the songs of a hair dryer. Thank it's you. Half the song, songs of a hair dryer. Yeah, I look like I use a hair dryer. No, you're white. Oh, yes, okay, in that case, yes. I, mean, I do have a video too, so I'll show you that for you. But uh, basically, Brandon, you can Nope, the mic's actually sitting there, is it oh, not? Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. I'll clip it to your shirt or just hold it or whatever you'd like to do. I'll just, and I'll just hold it. Now we can hear you. All right. So second page, I do have a picture of the boot and a turbine, two turbines right next to each other. One's a 500 watt, one's a 2,000 watt, and then you can see the, the size of the wings within the picture. Um, so basically... You can see the performance of uh, miles per hour on the chart. So about 35 miles per hour is top speed. You're probably not going to get top speed on a wind turbine on a roof. But so you say top speed, is that because the wind's pushing or what's pushing it to go? Yeah. <clears throat> what? The wind. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. if you get uh, top speed, then obviously you get into the range of 40 decimals for the sound. So it could be much quieter. I don't see having 35 mile per hour winds every day. We get some strong winds, but I don't see that happening every day. Yeah. Probably won't be able to hear it over the wind anyway. Yeah. Mm -mm. So what do you hope to accomplish with this thing? Well, I actually have a solar system on my house, and then I have a battery backup system. Okay. Um, my backyard is actually swampland, and it's actually really windy that comes in. Mm. I have a two-story house, pretty much, or a split-level house, so considered pretty much two-story. So I'd like to put something on the roof to help generate the batteries. I'm trying to get off the grid, huh? Yeah. That'll work. I don't think this thing's gonna produce enough electricity to get you off the grid. <laughs> well, not the 500 watt one, but yeah. So. I don't know if he's charging batteries. I mean, he'd be saving a heck of a lot, I would think. Do we have any do you have any experience with it? Is there anyone else doing it? That maybe not in Ice Sandy, but like neighboring towns. Or? Uh, no, not for turbines. I'm more into the solar side, to tell you the truth. Okay. Um, 
turbines are kind of new to me. Okay. Yeah. I do have a video too that I can show you on my phone, or if you can somehow put it on the TV. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think the video is necessary. Do you, you guys want to see it? I mean, I'm just going to believe exactly. I mean, if it's a sound of a hair dryer, geez, I hear that every morning. So and it's less than a hair dryer. Oh, less than a hair dryer. So that I don't see it yeah. being a nuisance or bothersome yeah. to. Well, like, I don't know who said it, but when the winds are probably that high, you're probably you're not going to hear it over the wind anyway. Yeah, Councilman Gordon said that, and he's more than likely he's right. The yeah. wind will be more noisier than that turbine. Yeah. I, I foresee don't see a problem with the smaller wind generator. I don't really see a problem with that. I don't either. Nope, I don't either. I think we were I, a little hesitant because we didn't know at first. You know. Well, it's noise and you know safety factors of this thing. I mean. Mr. Mayor, if I may, also it's not permitted by code, so that's another reason why we're here. Um, right now, we just allow that in our commercial districts. So we kind of put together some ideas in the memo, kind of following the same requirements um, for the commercial industrial districts, but. The question was, if we update our ordinance, do you just want it to be permitted use or do you want it to be a conditional use in residential? If it was a conditional use, they'd have to go through the conditional use permit, come through the planning commission, and then go to council. The neighbors would be notified within 350 feet. Or you could just yeah. do it as a permitted use and they would just apply for a building permit. I don't know, I say, I say just get a feel of what the community wants. and. I don't think anyone's going to have any problem with it, but I'd like to hear if someone did. So maybe do the long version of what you just said. But at the same time, if and I know it kind of sounds like they're jumping through hoops, but if we have them do that, what if the neighborhood com or the neighbor complains? They have a right to come to planning commission or, you know, for a hearing or what have you. At least we're hearing their opinion as well. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. The long version. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought you said different. I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought. No, you said no, no. I'm, no, I'm saying do the long version of what she said. You know. Yeah, I, I just would find agree. Out what the neighborhood, just find out what the neighborhood wants. And You're giving them the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you have a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think any, I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with it. Uh, if I may, just so you know, as a class of conditional use permit, I think it's three hundred twenty-five dollars non-refundable. So just keep uh, that in mind too. I would just process. let them get a permit and do it. I mean. Yeah, but what if their neighbor complains? You're not giving them the opportunity to. To discuss or it's not on their property and they're not going to be able to hear it anyway i mean it's it's not uh, just that what happens if somebody in your neighborhood does something you don't like and you want to file a complaint about it but it, it's not on your property but it's but it's okay for them i mean that's that's the point i'm getting at you got you have to be fair across the board if you're not going to like something that somebody does in their property even though it's their property i totally agree with you but if it's noisy obnoxious continuously happening your kids are getting woke up all night long because of it you're darn well you're going to want to file a complaint on it but just remember it's their property they can do whatever they want well they can always come in and do what he's doing they can come in and say that's hey, what that's why we went we that can change the rules but we've kind of done the homework here to see if it's going to really be an issue and we've decided that it's not going to be so why not just make it easy for it to get done Having to pay an extra three hundred dollars. Well, I, that I that I just I just I, the three hundred dollars is kind of a. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, but I still think we need to have a procedure. Well, I see the need for a procedure, but three hundred dollars is kind of is not kind of is steep. So, yes. Council, there is a provision uh, for a noise ordinance within Chapter Two Sixteen already. So someone could make a complaint for um, basically the code enforcement would check into it and see based upon a complaint if it was violating. And how would that how would that be in covering this situation? Would we still have a? As Councilmember Lindy mentioned, if, if someone was to complain about um, it's louder than he said, it's waking up my children up in the middle of the night or whatever, they could file a noise complaint with the city. So it's a different circumstance. If we change this now and say, okay, yeah, let's do the long version, but we're going to waive that three hundred dollar fee. Now we're setting precedents and. God only knows who's going to come at us next with that. So 
But I think I'd have to agree with Councilman Gordon. Let's give him the short version. And yeah, that's what I would say too. That's what I'm trying to say. Isn't that what you're saying? We do the short version, and if they, then if you have a noise complaint, then it's we deal. No, yeah, then then we deal. It's with an it. ordinance complaint, and, and yeah. you can go through the. Then we go through the proper channels. So. I, I I was with you until that three hundred dollars hit me. Well, oh, I did too. I was too. I, I I'm totally. I think it's kind of ridiculous to pay three hundred and some dollars for yeah, but conditional use to put up a. I don't know what is this thing? What thousand bucks? Uh, a couple hundred bucks. A couple hundred bucks. <laughs> pay two three hundred dollars to put a two hundred dollar wind generator in your house. That's kind of. No, it's worth five hundred bucks. Right? Yeah, no, it's worth five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Does this sound suffice to you, Ms. Selman, go the short version and? Uh, yeah, if that's what the council wants to do, we would still have to do the ordinance amendment though to allow it yep. in yeah. the residential district. So we still have to wait until that gets yeah. um, approved. We could probably put that on the next council yeah. meeting. Yeah, we June 1st. Yep. So I mean, that's my recommendation. Let's do it that way then. I agree. So it's just, so the only problem I see having is that noise ordinance thing. If someone came and came and complained to us, but put it in your playbook. Based on what I see, I don't think it's going to be a problem. So it'd be too heavy. They were already plotting. Can we put this on my flagpole? Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be too heavy for my flagpole, though. We'll just have this gentleman install them around the city. There we go. Get you a business going next. Yeah. Well, there you go. We'll just. Uh, let Ms. Selman do her due diligence, and hopefully June 1st we'll have it at council, and we'll get it rolling for you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, E7, uh, well to sand discussion. This has to be Mr. Sylvester. Mayor Johnson, members of city council, so that well to project is now complete, and during that project they removed 300 yards of sand. Uh, Holy during that project, God. that sand was removed extremely fine sand. It's not compactable at all. Um, uh, we've been approached by residents and oh, by Sandy and just people that aren't residents to call me what the city's gonna do with the sand. Um, That's like a beach sand, like a white sand, isn't it? It's even finer than that. It's like hourglass sand. It's like you hold it in your hand and just it falls off. I seen it, but I didn't feel it. Yeah, I should have. It's extremely fine. It's not compactable. You can't use it at a volleyball court or anything like that or a sandbox because it's so fine, it gets in your clothes, and then what they tell me is it'll get in your clothes and it'll take out your washing machine, because it's just, it's that fine. So, I've been approached, people ask me what to do with the sand. I'd like, with your permission, to sell the sand in its entirety per the surplus policy. <laughs> Wouldn't we be stupid to say no to that? <laughs> I think so. I think I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Councilman Gordon, <laughs> you have any objections no, no, to that? No, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, E8, liquor store plaque discussion. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So on new city facilities, we have typically done a bronze plaque. I've taken the layout of the last one that we did, which was the Isani Indoor Arena. We've also done All it at, uh, we have one here at City Hall if you want to see what it looks like when the City Hall was built. But here's a rendering that I just put together. This would be a bronze. The last time that we did this, it was approximately $525 looking for direction from uh, the committee if you would like me to have one of these built for the new liquor store. I don't see why not. I think we've done it on all the other city buildings. I think we should stay in that same realm. Where are we going to put it? Uh, typically they're on the entrance. Probably inside when you walk in the door. Yep. We've done it. There's I mean, one. I see them everywhere. Yeah, there's one in there. Yep. I wish we could change the one and sell it there. Five hundred dollars for a plaque. Bronze. It's bronze, bronze Councilman bronze. Gordon. Come on, go when you when you get a moment. Go out and look at the one. I bronze. know, I've seen it. I, I don't think it's necessary, but and you know I love putting my name on everything, but uh, that's I don't see why we need it. Can we get a cheaper plaque? I mean, I'd be, I'd be okay it's with all over bucks. the city. I know, but they do them on everything. So. Every city does it. Yeah, it isn't it isn't any other reason. They all do it. Yeah, I'd kick in a hundred bucks. You guys want to pay for it together? <laughs> That's Paul's idea. I'm game. <laughs> well, 
I'd the pay for it. Is for it, so we'll move forward with that. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to know. E9, the EDA purchasing old liquor store discussion. Oh, oh. Mayor, this is your item. It is. So here was my thought on this, guys, that if the EDA purchases that old liquor store, the EDA actually has bait, so to speak, for a restaurant or uh, business um, to be able to solicit that business, so to speak. So if uh, I don't know, some steakhouse comes in here and says, hey, we'd like to come to your city. Uh, we understand the, the e, you know, this land is for sale. Yep, EDA owns that. Well, then the EDA can take that and run with it. They can solicit, they can do the, just to throw it in a lump sum, do what EDA does. I think we need to first figure out what we're gonna do with the police station, because that was the original plan. And if we don't have something in line for that police station to happen, we're gonna be SOL, and it's gonna cost us a lot more money than what we originally planned. Yeah, yeah that's right. Agreed. I think we gotta but, wait till we figure out what we're gonna do on the PD first. Part. Okay, well, what if we figure out what we're gonna do on the police department and and now we're back to this discussion again. So let, why wouldn't we just say, if all goes well, then yes, the EDA would purchase it, or if it doesn't go well, then we go with our original plan. And I guess all I'm looking for is to have our ducks in a row so when that time comes, we're not coming back and beating the dead horse here. Okay, well, well I thought the original plan was to make the liquor store a PDA. Please it is. Yeah. It is. Okay, so why are we purchasing it? I'm not clear on that. Well, he wants to get it so it's something that come about. I, I have no problem with that, but I think that this EDA purchasing this, of the old building can be done in a short short time period of time without jeopardizing anything at that point. I think that I, I think we're going to we're jumping the gun right now at this moment. So what are you worried about jeopardizing? I'm trying to follow. This. Okay, so I'm just, just, just so, to follow this no, I, I just yeah. don't just understand. I, I do this when I'm trying to explain something. If we found a different building that would work better for the PD, okay. that would cost us less money than rebuilding or redoing the liquor store, the old liquor store, I'm all for that. I have no problem with doing it. And that's what one of the discussions were, okay. but we haven't found that yet. So we have, was it four years, three and a half years before we have to be out of there? How long? Well, that's about another four, right? Yeah, we've got about another, another four, four years, yeah. Another four years they have to be out of the building that they're in right now. Right. So we got four years to find a property. Let's not wait till the last minute though. No, let's not wait till the last minute, but I'm, but this liquor store was also sold on that perception that we were going to save money by putting the PD in there. And that, I, I, I am going to stand firm on that. That's what we have to do. We have to stay on that premises. I'm just and, worried that we're going to move that police department one more time. That's all I'm worried about. Hey, we that? may find something in the next year. Because if, if we find something that suffice to, I mean, what's the fire department's outgrowing where they're at. That's why they wanted that building. So now they have that building and they have room to grow. They have room to put things that they need in order to do their job sufficiently. Well, isn't, the liquor, isn't the liquor store big enough to... We'd, we'd so have to expand, we'd have to remodel, over. we'd have a lot of work to do in that building. I'm sure Mr. Becker could touch base on that. Yeah, so the, so the plan with the current liquor store building is of course once we've got the new liquor store up um, once we get to that point about four years down where it's time to turn that into the PD building we've got right now in the capital plan we'll have cash um, as scheduled for 1.16 million dollars 1.16 million dollars in now let's see if we find that a building would, that, that we don't have to do anything to and that for would be to rehab the building add garages whatever the you know site work probably going to add some pavement that kind of thing so um, 1.16 should get us a fair but that's in four years that's not not any in we're talking six months to eight months time that we're going to be in that new building yep. so, so i mean we got four years to determine if we're going to have yeah. the eda purchase this building that's yeah. what i'm getting at i i think we're we're and throwing the cart in front of the horse at yeah this and moment. to that extent if we if we get to a point where we think we we think that seems like a viable path. I mean, if, if we need to for economic development purposes, either to enable like some kind of a TIF or abatement or some sale, subsidy, whatever the, 
whatever the tool is going to be. I mean, if we simply find ourselves in a situation where we need to just transfer ownership formally from city to EDA, I mean, we could just, we can just do that quite quickly. That so quickly. my question would be was, what if we put a for sale sign in front of that old liquor store tomorrow? Is that feasible? Well, maybe not tomorrow, but, you know, we might. We might I'm wait. not saying it's going to yeah, happen. It, it, no, the, the idea, though, that we should put a sign saying, hey, for sale, just see what happens. That's not a, there's and no what reason, if somebody there's bites? There's no reason that we can't do more than one thing at the same time. And, and that's nothing to say to, I'm not, nothing against the mayor on this. There's no reason that we couldn't sell that building for $1.6 million. If market, you know, if, if that's what the appraised value comes in that, and that, and that, that money can then offset to the PD. But I still, like I said, I still think we need to stay with plan A first. And then if need be, I wouldn't put a for sale sign up on that store until that, until that liquor store is out of there. Because I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. There's going to be 400 people calling. You're selling a liquor store? Yeah, Even though true. they already know it's going over there, that's you're true. selling a liquor store? Or they'll mistake it for being closed already. Right. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't so let's I would wait on that. Part yeah, that's, that. yeah, I think, I think we, I, it, I, I think Mayor Johnson's got a, a good idea, but I think we need to stay with plan, schedule plan A first. And then when that time arises, let's get into that new building. Then maybe, maybe by then there's going to be some property in town, a business that's gone out or that wants to cash out and be willing to sell it reasonably enough that we, what we could sell that building for would pay for it. I got no problem with that. Did, we get, did we get the appraisal back on, on plan B, so to speak? No. Uh, no, they'll be coming until the end of the month. Okay. Yeah. I'm with Steve, I just think it's now is not the time to really dig into that too much. I think it's, we need to keep our first option on the table and until something changes, then I think we could take a look at this in the future, but I'm not opposed to to selling the building and putting the police station somewhere else, I don't, I don't know how I feel about the EDA taking it over and. Well, they we have to we have to, the EDA has kind of to stuff, take it as sell it as property of the city. I don't think it's, uh, the way I understand it, the city can't really violently sell property. It's kind of a the EDA is what has to do that. So that's where that comes in. And I'm just looking for a bargaining piece. I I see it's a great thing, but I think. I think right now we need to wait till we're at least. And I'm not disagreeing that I, I think it's a good thing, but maybe, you know, maybe I am jumping the gun. I just wanted to have my ducks in a row and I don't want to wait till the last minute. That's all. All two of your ducks? Right. He's got three. Oh, we've got three ducks. Okay. Two geese. No geese. <laughs> so, all right, we're good on that one. Let's go out to E10, the liquor, liquor store sign discussion. renderings so they're not exactly right so I'm going to walk through them. Basically what we're presenting are two different options. Um, one is the list sign so as Coles, uh, Councilmember Colson had mentioned uh, at the planning commission meeting when the plans had gone through that he really liked to see them lit because we all want the liquor store to be successful and to be even more successful than it would be is to have great signage that um, shows people where we're at and brings people in. So we'll go through these. Basically the options are that I mentioned the lit versus non-lit sconces. So A and B would be of the front. Now on your image like B, it. there are no sconces, and I know that. However, you would have to imagine that there would be. B is not lit, A is lit, and it also has um, a backlighting to give some dynamic with our, kind of our Isani liquor logo that has our tree and river in there. As we move on to C and D, those are of the same sign. C is the lit, there would be no sconces. D is not lit, but has the sconces shining down. <clears throat> e, for curbside pickup, is lit, there would be no sconces. I know they show them there, but there would not be. And then an F, that is not lit letters with the sconces. I think sconces are fine. Uh, the final picture is, because of our sign ordinance, we can't put it on all sides. So on that third side, we would put some neon lights or some lights such as the wine, beer, spirits in the windows. That's just giving an example of that. So I'm looking for direction. Um, this will change a little bit of how we have electrical going in. So we want to make our decision sooner than later. I'll bring finalized plans and costs to council. So just 
looking for your input, there actually is not a whole lot of cost difference between having lit signs or signs not lit with sconces because you would get rid of the sconces. My question would be, I, I do like sign A versus sign B, but how much are we talking difference of cost? That's going to be the... Well, imagine that there would also be sconces that would be taken away. I have an example. If we were to have sign B, lit versus not lit, the cost would approximately be between $4,200 to $4,800. Okay. But again, we also would be removing the sconces, which I don't have that cost factored in. So it is a little bit more to have them lit, but not that much more. It's under a thousand bucks anyway. Yeah, but now if you, you know, then all of a sudden the, the sign A, which is our city logo, blah, 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 turns in, that's $8,800. That's going to be a hard thing to swallow for some. I, I think, I think like curbside, I think those can be lit with sconces in my opinion, but I, I think with black lettering with the, with the uh, sconce lighting on it, it actually personally I think looks pristine, more crisp. Yeah, that's what I would say too. Yes. <coughs> but I think the front sign, I think on that front entrance would be a lit sign. I do like the, I see any liquor with the city tree in that on there, but I, that's all going to determine on cost. I'm going to go. I, I'll be hopefully getting those costs to have this on the June first meeting. I just don't have the cost yet. I but think lit. I think the lit sign in the front is the more important. I think the rest we can do with scones. So in my a, opinion. The Isani liquor sign, the C and D, that'll be shown if they were going to come. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but if they're coming in from the Coburn, so off of five, coming down six, heading south. That would be the sign that they see from that direction. Do you want that to be lit, or would that match then with sconces on the side? I think sconces, personally. I think that those are going to be a lot easier to maintain <laughs> longevity-wise. I, I, I think the front of the building needs to, like I say, like Bluebird Park, I want it to pop. I'm and going to go back to what I said on day one. And I said the most important sign is out on the highway because I think that liquor stores at least a full block off of the highway that's my view i don't see any signs here on the highway here so uh, Buckley, we're still working into that we're i think that's the most important sign so we still don't have those um plans i don't finalized to bring back to the committee yet so that's so that, that's still on the table Councilman okay. Brigley. I'm not saying it's on the table. I'm just saying to me that's the most important sign. And, and nobody's saying. disagreeing with you. Okay, no. good. But, no, no, but what's in front of you right now is what's the in building. front of you right now. Okay. Well, building. I've got no opinion until we get that sign out there. So that's what I'm saying. Because I think that's the most important sign. So. Councilman Gordon, you got any? I mean, I like, I, I agree with Steve. I think the, the unlit signs are, are a little more classy looking. But I would do those probably all the way around instead of having the, the lit sign even for the front. I don't know if I like having, I mean, I'm not opposed to the lit sign in the front either. I just don't know if I like having the logo, sort of the city logo there on the, on the liquor store, I guess. I don't know. Well, Council Member uh, Gordon, that is the I stand in liquor store logo. Is that the liquor store like logo? That. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it just kind of matches the city logo. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess I'd like to see it, just the unlit stuff all the way around then probably. So you're saying with the black, like in B, but with the tree and the, the logo, but with the sconce or sconces? I don't know. I, to me, I, I'd have to say my opinion would be I like A on the front of the building, otherwise F around the rest of the building. Do you like lit all the way around, basically? No, F, F, you got sconces. That's sconces. Yeah, it's sconces. F Black lettering of sconces. sconces. Oh, I mean, F everything else oh, should be sconces. I, I thought you said E. No, no, no. Sorry. No, he I, liked A in the front. And then I like F, A on the front to, to make everybody. the rest of the building. Yeah, the, the rest of it is, I think, could yeah, be sconces. I mean, I'd be okay with that, too. So A, D, and F are the preferred. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 
And I am with Councilman Burgley. I think we need to really work on getting too. that sign out there. I'd like to. I'd like to have our own standalone digital sign if we could, but we got to really check into that. Yeah. I think. I, I think this city. I'll be honest with you. The way this city is operating and 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 how it's done is there are so many small cities that have these cotton picking digital signs already, and then we're talking a population of 600 people. I just and told they got you. a four eighty thousand dollar digital sign in Jumbo, city. jumbotron almost. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I just said I was at. Um, now I'm going to blink what township I went to. Athens Township. Thank you. Athens, Athens, Athens Township meeting I went to, and they have one right in front of their town hall. They do really? Yeah. yeah. I've never seen that. Yeah. I mean, they don't even have half of what the city has. And they have one. Well, what are we waiting for? This was it. That was in discussion quite a few years ago. And the previous mayor shot it down completely. I think at that time it was like $80,000. And he said, no way. Nope, 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 nope. But if also the there's a chunk of grant. I'd have to it. agree with him on that one. Hey, there's a chunk of granite <laughs> sitting right out here yeah. that matches this. It's the sister piece to that. Yeah. That was supposed to be out by I see any ready mix. It's in pieces right now. <laughs> because a certain person pissed off the person those came from. Pieces as in crumbled or pieces as in you can piece it back together and put it it's up? It's in crumbles. Oh, is that right? Okay. So it's no good. Mayor Council, if I could turn your attention to that final picture that has the beer, wine, spirits. Is there interest of council for me to proceed getting pricing on putting those types of lit signs in the windows on the side of the building? Well, I think that'd be a good idea. I think I we can get why. pricing. Think, we can always people, get pricing yeah. on it. You can get a pricing, but I think people already assume that comes with the liquor store. Yeah. I don't know why you'd have to put that on a sign. Other You're just do, polishing. Do more so i think we can get pricing on it yeah, I, it ain't pricing. gonna hurt to get pricing on it let's see what it costs can absolutely. i yeah let's see what it costs i want to know if i can add if we got a couple minutes to add something on call we have until 6 30. okay miss wood had sent out emails to all of us somebody complaining about veteran discount and it's and it's I am one of the only people that sat up here and said that liquor store should give veterans discount every day to veterans. And I don't want to go into elaboration, but we've had that discussion last meeting. I think we should continue with veterans discount seven days a week. We could limit senior discount to one, maybe two days a week, maybe offer firemen police one day a week discount but i think veterans should have a seven days a week discount and i think now that you know we've like previous discussion we had in the last council meeting they're still looking for it yeah now that it's been now that it's been going on yeah. it's pretty tough to change yeah it. but i would imagine you've been uh, hearing all about it yeah mayor and uh, council members I, I can give you a little insight into what we've been hearing at the liquor store if you'd like absolutely um, we, you know we, we've told people that you know there's no longer a, a better discount and there's been a little bit of shock and disbelief we, a lot of people are, are just fine with it you know it, it hasn't changed their their habit shopping habits but we've had a few people that kind of like scoff and well i guess i'll, I'll be going somewhere else um it is 10 percent um it does add up but in the long run uh, in my personal opinion to get what it's worth i would like to see it continue to go because i think it is a good reflection on the city on the value you know that we do appreciate veterans um i don't know if i'd expand it past veterans because that could be a pretty slippery slope uh, but you know we'll do whatever you guys direct us to do um, seven days a week though that's what else most liquor stores do do they yeah cambridge does it um city does it. north branch does, does it seven days a week everyone around us does it yep seven days a week ECs does it Yep, EC does it seven um, days a week. And then another thing, when you have customers that aren't veterans, you know, in line, and, and they see that you're giving a veteran a discount, they appreciate that as well. We we get several comments on that. That you know, that's really nice that you guys do that. Um, so just to give you some feedback on that. Thank you. We were given bad advice in the past too, and which is that it wasn't a good idea, and it was still going on. So I think. I think it's going to be pretty tough to pull give it. It's kind of hard to give it and then take it away. Yeah, yeah. And and 
it, and it's no, I mean, you all know, I was the only person on this council that said, let's do that. Our previous liquor store manager said, no. Mm -hmm. And it got, and that's what part, probably the reason it was pushed down. But I, I still think we should do that. I mean, I, and, and it's, veterans do hold a very close spot to my heart. My son has done two tours in Iraq. My nephew's done two tours in, uh, in the Gulf. Gulf. They sacrificed a lot. My son missed his baby's birth because he was sitting in Iraq. And I, that's just my son. That's one out of how many thousands of veterans. In, in my father's a 38 and a half year veteran. So, so I mean. I mean, I get it. I totally get it. So I mean, they've sacrificed a lot. And I, I, I would and like and to And I'll be honest sponsor. with you, I, I wouldn't be for this, but uh, you're right. It's how do you take it away when it's it's been given and and it's the right thing to do anyway. It is the right thing to do. I think so I, I guess I would be okay with the seven day a week yeah, veteran absolutely. discount. Yeah. But do, what do we need to do anything on that? Do we have, does that have to go in front of council? Because there is a resolution that states when we do give discounts and it doesn't have it every day, my recommendation would be that we do bring it to council on June 1st as a consent agenda item just to solidify that it was approved by council to offer that. Okay, can I ask something stupidly? Can he just kind of do it? No. Does I, he does he have to wait until June first to do it, or can he do it tomorrow? No, he could do it immediately because we were already doing it unofficially, anyways. Mike, you have a problem with that? Keith. Anything else we'd like to add? We have a ton of time. Yay. There was something that I had, and I totally forgot what it was now, so. I know Jimmy likes long meetings. What'd you say? I do like long meetings, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. I can murder you. Is he really? Yep. I've known him for years. Hmm. Nothing, fellas? Motion to adjourn by second. Councilman Lundin and second by Councilman Brigley. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 4-0. Therefore, we stand adjourned. <laughs>